that can tell you you're pretty, you're getting rid of gas, or it can tell you this gas is coming in as quick as it's, as quick as you're getting it out. We need to get a sense of which of those is the case. samples and I've got photographs I'll share with any one of y'all. I don't know if they've been posted anywhere else, but the material that we pulled out was like a heavy drilling tool. Very thick, uh, very viscous, and so gritty. We also, interestingly, pulled out water lily vine. Yeah. Water lily vine. Out of the cavern? Out of the cavern. It made it to the top of the cavern? Evidently. Woo. Evidently. That's a long two miles. That's a long trip, and uh, it's, it's hard to get your get your head around it. But uh, you know, if you think about, if you imagine the cavern was uh, a two thousand foot cylinder that was about three hundred foot in diameter, and it broke somewhere over here, and you had all this material up here falling into that break. Well, there was a lot of room beneath the break to fill up with all this material. So it's conceivable that something that near the surface could have made its way all the way down to the break and ended up in the top of the fill and then the fill starts squeezing its way up. Yeah. But it was sure enough fresh and it definitely came out of the well. And it was water lily vine. Uh, we also found chunks of clay which is very consistent with the material that you see on the surface out here. So I'm convinced that there is material that's made its way all the way around and it's even conceivable there could be a tree or two. Okay. Um, for six weeks, we had well taggings. We were going down and tagging the fill, and we were about 10 feet below the roof every time we did it. We were all pretty excited about that, thinking, well, the cavern's full. We finally got it full. We went back, and boom, there we go, 300 feet deep overnight. And no dramatic pressure changes, no seismic activity to suggest there was some big massive movement. So we started thinking, what in the world could have done that? Well, it could have been something suspended, something floating, a root ball. Who knows? But if you can get water lily vine, which is right out in the shallow swamp, to come around, then it's conceivable you could get something bigger. So that's where we are. 
I did not put that in right. Best and brightest brains in, the, in, in this process have predicted uh, that the sinkhole would grow uh, to a certain diameter, a certain extent, a certain dimension. And so far, all of those predictions have been spot on. We haven't, we haven't seen anything that goes beyond what the predictions that were made a year ago, over a year ago. My husband is such an intellect, I'm so not. But <laughs> I want to ask you, I thought the about three miles to the east. Oh, I knew they were huge. Yeah, and, it, and about a mile north and south. Our facility, the, the cavern number three, was on the western edge of the salt mass. Now, there are adjacent caverns, some of which are still in grind production service, but they're in the volume we were monitoring with seismic. And they were subject to extensive geological characterization, the seismic survey that we did, of course, they're all under constant surveillance where pressure changes. Uh, they have a much more frequent sonar program where, where the operators would go in and shoot a sonar and look for anything unusual in the cavern. Uh, so I think we're I think we're secure there. Just a simple question, no, though. No, no, no. <laughs> we have to take Louisiana geography and Louisiana history. <laughs> I, I, I've seen uh, you know reputable uh, publications make the, make that same. Salt domes are pretty independent. They're common, very common. There's hundreds of them on the Gulf Coast. Oh, yeah. I knew that. Yeah. How do they find them? Uh, how do they find them? Uh, years and years of exploration because uh, salt domes make prolific oil and gas producing properties. In fact, some salt domes were discovered by gas seeping up on the surface. And that's been one of our problems here. Is We've got gas that's naturally occurring from swamp and, and vegetative decay. There's also thermogenic gas that can, that can seep up out of the ground from a deeper source. For the most part, salt domes are better oil producers than they are gas producers because the gas that surrounds salt domes tends to find an escape. It's called fugitive emissions. It just, just finds a way up. But oil remains behind. But they were, they were discovered uh, beginning after uh, Actually, Spindletop was the first big Gulf Coast salt dome discovery. That was 1901. Anything else? I'm worn out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of the day, but isn't this a wonderful place? We need hammocks. It is. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Well, I want to say thank you all.